Blue, I got all my freaking drinks over here. All right. <laughs> hey, guys. Welcome, welcome to the Brush Sauce Critique. This is long overdue. We had the holidays, both of them. And then, Jessica. I was also dying. Thank you for joining me again tonight, by the way. But, yes, Jessica's been thank dying you. for, like, two, two and a half weeks. Three. Three. Three and a half weeks. I was so sick, it would not go away. So yeah. this is actually the first drink I've had since like mid December. And why don't you tell us what do you got there tonight? Oh, it's um, Kao whiskey, Japanese whiskey. Sounds very pro. good. Very good. I I have just recently discovered Japanese whiskey this year, and I've been really enjoying it. You bring so. some up to me. I want to try some of that. <laughs> I have I have a white Russian. And it is way later than we planned. It's like 10.30 at night, our time. So we're going to hope for the best and see how this goes. Again, sorry, folks, the, for the delay. The theme was... Um, sacred Machines. The Sacred Machines. Yeah, something like that. And I'm going to throw Jess under the bus now. But you <laughs> had the privilege of picking our 10 selected... Well, there, there was mostly a consensus. We get down mostly, to the last mostly. like 12... Yeah. 13 11 then we start having to like you know arm wrestle over who gets in we did so he gave me the final the final I, I just submitted because i i can't beat a a sick woman recovering from hell so <laughs> that's the whiskey's job put me yeah. back on bed rest <laughs> you always say it's your medicine <laughs> it's true this is um i'm gonna try to get the name out kichi kichi arts we got a this is like a, an autonomous elephant. It's a very cool idea. With I... some robed people. Like a, like they're up in the corner. They're down here. There's this a lot of cool things going down. I, I'm really loving the design of like the head with the like globe, you know, like mechanical pieces inside that yes. you can see. I think that that's really cool. And I think he, they got some really beautiful effects like on the, the metal of the trunk and on the glass. Um, which mm. I kind of, I feel like other areas of the painting, the, the metal kind of uh, never hits and clay like. Never hits that tear. Yeah, it it doesn't have that that sheen. That right, that's some of those that, areas that's have. our big thing. Like you, you did like this little area so well. It it yeah. feels like the farther we get away from that area, like the, a different artist kind of takes it hold, and it. It's it's kind of weird like that. Like, do you have like this this character, for example, down here that's on a very different tier and level of finish compared mm -hmm. to like some of the magic you're working up there? So consistency for me is what really drags this thing back through the mud a bit. Yeah, uh, it's like if you if you just look at certain areas, it looks really sharp, really really nicely done, well thought out. And then as soon as you kind of go around the sides of the painting, it just becomes kind of blobby. I don't want to say stereotypical shapes, but like very flat symbolic shapes rather than anything that feels three-dimensional like the the focal areas. Yeah, like we don't see like that firm kind of like form right here. Yeah. You have blasted the highlight <laughs> carelessly kind of through there. Um, I was going to say that foot is driving me crazy. Yeah, you it, don't really. It doesn't look, it doesn't look referenced no. for one, and it, it looks flat for another. Then there's like, you know, it's like the material of this ivory or whatever kind of. I, and that, that's part of the problem is like, I, I'm not entirely sure what material the white part of the elephant is. Again, you did the gold really well in some of the, the, the metal, the but then like, what is this? In the face of it, it has a sheen to it, but that doesn't carry through with the rest of the body. A little too much color dodge in, in part of that. And then a lot of the forms, like on the tusks, completely get flat, which is mm -hmm. a shame. But I, I think there's enough here to salvage, and you should absolutely go back and readdress, you know, some of these things. There, There's the also... Go. I was just going to say, the same care and attention you put into that globe headpiece, like put it into the legs, put it into the trunk, put it into the figure. Obviously, the figure doesn't have to be as clearly rendered, but you want it to be designed. You want it to feel like there's some thought put into the design of it. And the, spatially, there's some weird kind of things. Obviously, these are very big masses of stuff, right? Like the, 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 um, you know, the, the elephant, the mammoth whatever we want to call it. And then like the wall is like immediately to it. But then it's like, you're also, you kind of see it on a second read squeezing in a whole second one 
trying to like in between this space oh. and this space like just just was, lose yeah. it just lose I was wondering it. what that was it was like it was noisy back there but I hadn't quite it's noisy made that word I, in I would lose it. it I mean there's yeah. a bit of a tangent here now we're getting super nitpicky like if we have this as the right that's a shape you're really mirroring that way too conveniently with the cloud and it's just yeah. like just cut it right through it or keep it separate separate them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um i think this could do without these shapes too again there's a lot here and it's like you started to cram little bits of things in every little morsel of space so well, I, I think just like letting the elephant breathe a little bit feel full but by the fact that they cropped it literally like from edge to edge of the elephant, there is no yeah. breathing room in this this painting at all. I would actually say it might benefit from just zooming out a little bit um, just to give that elephant oh, a little bit of breathing room. I, I agree 100%. Like I think just bringing it down even to that level mm -hmm. and doing yeah. something and so like it's that. Like, there's somewhere for him to walk other than like into the side of the, the canvas. Yep, and just use that space to... To balance to balance things out oh it's very cool very mm -hmm. cool idea never would have thought of something like that it's awesome joshua class this is cool i love i love the the like the color palette on this so i'm a sucker for blues and yellows and all yeah, that it has, green it has kind of like a old school sci-fi kind of feel yeah to it. it has a very like you know, it, it knows what it wants to do, and it, you know, it's it's really embracing that. Like, it's it's not getting, like, too polished. It's very evenly uh, um, finished, which is, mm -hmm. like, the opposite of the last one, which is good. The thing from here would be to, like, let's take the overall polish, like, up a step or two. You know, like, getting the occasional, right, this is small stuff, but, like, you know, getting, like, the occasional smaller shape present in some of the lighter areas or the, where the light hits, like having like, right. Some of the tree, smaller shapes being visible, maybe adding right. 10% more details, you know, into there probably pushing. And this is the overall probably weakest part of it is this hand. Um, yeah, we that, can kind of see what it's doing. Hand. Right. But it's, it's very kind of gimped and flat looking. Well, and I think it's, you know, as you pointed out earlier, it's that thumb, the way the thumb is coming right so, at us, it looks like there's no thumb because of the foreshortening. It just, it's a very awkward pose. And for it kind of to be the center of yep. the whole painting, you want a very striking pose for the hand, a good silhouette. Like, yeah, I would definitely, I'm not going to draw a thumb because if, if it's any kind of art kryptonite that I have, it's drawing any kind of appendage from the wrist <laughs> up forward. I, I just can't do it. Not without substantial effort that I'm not going to strain myself to do at this point. But like, yeah, just like the, the shape, right? The, get that shape I, of it to really kind I, of I would almost just take some photos of either your hand or a friend's hand, like laying on a table or Yo, something. Yo, mama's hand. Everybody's just, hand. Find a hand that, like, a pose for the hand that just has a really nice silhouette that just reads really well. It's awesome. um, and then I would I would rework that section. This is the other thing, too, with it. There is a very present, invisible, and, you know, like, visible shape right here. This needs to get defined a lot more, I feel. Like, this little glowing... I, I would honestly just get rid of it. it feels but, it, it, you know, it's like the hand is kind of, like, embracing it, though. It, it's been designed for this. Uh, in a sense it's just like that know. that's got to be thought through though it's just, it's just a silhouette i i know that this this piece has a little bit of trouble where my eye starts jumping around a little bit um yes and with like little pops like that like that little pop catches my eye um where the tree or the little vine is going up and then you got that like flare of light coming through the window in the foreground towards the top that really catches my eye and it's not a focal point so it's, it's I, that's, I agree like, I was gonna say that it the sharp line right with the light it's a bit too much how the light isn't really kind of actually lighting the the yeah, it's, it's just it's careless kind of stuff it, it needs to it needs more time to address that stuff and the way that that light is is on this side of like where the, that bright center focal point of that light is is a really distracting place for it because it's yeah. cut off from the rest of the painting so it kind of like forms its own little mini yeah i think just sim right just simplifying it yeah and you could have the light coming in more from the top a little closer to the column 
and it, it would read better yeah there there's some gorgeous imagery going on here and of course themes and stuff is also looking really good i'd probably do a much more dramatic shadow Mm -hmm. with the yeah. hands that's an opportunity like and if you I, I do keep like the hand in general is a lost opportunity yeah so i agree but like yeah if you're gonna keep the figure there tighten the figure up silhouette it with the thumb shadow so it really pops and then define and own and own this area the and foreground I would, good i would say one other thing that keeps catching my eye with this is the the face of the the mech robot that's kind of facing towards us, it feels much more cartoonish and generic than the rest of the painting. The rest of the this painting feels like, yeah, yeah it has like a very cool style. It feels very unique. But then like you get to that part and for some reason it just feels a little more simple, a little more, I don't know, less unique, less interesting. I think like getting rid of that highlight here too also oh, helps. That helped. Mm -hmm. But this is really cool. I, yeah, and I think like with with these on the back, you got really strong direct sunlight coming in. You're gonna need to define these materials, like, and that's the big thing. Like all the materials are rendered. I know it's part of the style here. It looks exactly the same, but like if this is metal, I mean, get some get some highlight on there, or, or like bring some kind of light, you know, to the forefront on this, so that we can kind of see. You know yeah, that that all getting softer, lit. But yeah. It just, it needs something because right now it just kind of feels like this monochrome yep. quick sketch. Yep. And it, I, it might even be the hand. The hand looks <coughs> really boned in, the pose of the hand. Really cool though. Very uh, cool piece. Yeah, disclaimer, we are still not over whatever we had and we'll be <laughs> hacking up. The it's I, that I time still have some, I still have some old man cops left in me. I'll try and keep them under control. The Omicron variant's oh. taking over everybody and I fight it with hard <laughs> drinks. So I really loved the, the composition crop. of this one. Yeah. This he, is he, wild, dude. You've always submitted really cool, vivid sort of things. But it's like, I mean, I, I did a double take on this. I'm like, Whoa, what the fuck's yeah, going on? Yeah, this is on? so spooky. Oh, I love the feeling of it. I love the color choices. Just How really about... cool design. And I know that his style is very loose and sketchy. And in a lot of places on here, I think it works. But overall, I would say, like, it doesn't, this one in particular doesn't feel finished, particularly no, on No, it's, like, a little too rough in a little too many places, I think. Yeah, the, the empty, the emptier side of the canvas uh, really starts to feel just kind of, like, blocked in and not designed. Yeah, I think, like, getting some, right, some of that contrast back mm -hmm. in where it counts, getting those nice firm edges too is going to count for a lot on something like this i'm going to just drop a little hard light uh, what's it called it seems like there's some kind of fire going on in there not fire but light so i think bring, finding the right mode you know getting that in there see like the difference it yeah it'll it'll poke it out and that's what i think we, we want to do that also helps because you have a bit of a competition for focal point between this this submarine mouth and then this like sunset and rock, which is like the highest point of contrast in the painting. And it's the most unfinished part of the painting. And it's the most, least important part of the painting. Yeah. So you really so got to knock I that second I would back. knock the foreground down too and bring more blue into it. Tie it mm -hmm. together so we get more of that. Then maybe see like on either side of this, I mean, because you could really pull it. You could really pull it either way if we're being honest. Um, like there's a good area like within these negative shapes, which are all really well designed and cool. So like, yeah, what the I, thing I think that's the strength of this piece is how interesting the shapes are. Yes, exactly. It's almost like you've been on one of these episodes before. <laughs> it feels like it's been oh. forever. <laughs> a right. long time ago before the plague. Right. Um, it feels like. Like in, in this, some of these areas in particular, like we could, you could probably, I'm going to, I don't know the, the how I'd want to approach this, but, you know, bringing in, not, not necessarily blue, but, you know, like a little more overall atmospheric ambient light, you know, to, to kind of push, you know, some of that, you know, just, it'll really even, it could even push the contrast a little bit further to help those shapes. 
I kind of like how moody it was over there. Do but... Well, I, I oh. like things to be a little moodier than you, I think. Yeah, you do. <laughs> but I, I'm looking at this other side of it, and I'm thinking if you pull some of that orange over to, like, kind of that yeah. little corner where the fin comes up, maybe to help guide the eye or, towards the... Or even, like, it's, right? Like, it seems like there's something big going on. Oh, sh wrong mode. Hmm. See, like I, I, like, I think some kind of definition needs to be going on over here because it's like a little too ambiguous and, and chaotic like this in particular i think is the weakest part of it mm -hmm. yeah. like this needs that, that like, whole what corner. is it what is it you know and and maybe even de-emphasize the horizon yeah, that's, that's kind of what i'm saying is like that whole section is calling so much attention to it and it's just competing it's not actually complimenting like i don't think it needs to be warm unless the whole thing is like a sunset but then you're gonna have to bring in like some of those sunset or twilight hour, you know, colors across. Yeah, you know, if it's the just whole slightly less over... local, I think it would help. Yeah. I'm just going. But yeah, I think just simplifying that too for a while. I did the warm and the cold thing, but you do that, you you, you know, you definitely I would up that uh, information in there. And the way that you have this like bright area of water behind the rock i would actually bring that a little closer to the mouth of the submarine and have like some highlights oh. of water there yeah like right than out the mouth. the mouth yeah like you could get some really cool shapes in there that would guide the eye up into the mouth a little more so, rather than off to the side someone call raw straws we need the color dodge up in here right, like that like it's like it, like you could see right good parts of it in the, in the light and then you could even push and like twist oh, shit. water right it's pushing some of the the wateriness of it and yeah. you could use that orange line as a whoosh as a as a directional element yeah. right in the piece it's like that <laughs> big old layer brush this is cool though this is super yeah, I... super cool the, I, this was one of the ones we considered not including because of the level of finish, especially on the, the right I'm side of the canvas. But I'm glad we did, though. It is, it's, the composition and the design of it is so strong, and it's like it really doesn't need a lot for the way that he paints. It just needs to be pushed 15% more, and it would be awesome. Well said. Very cool piece. Cheers. <sighs> Vasco. We ready for Vasco. Are you <laughs> folks ready for Vasco's image? Let's oh go. Oh my god. I need a drink for this one. Lachaim. <laughs> so, long story short, short, we were we were looking at all this in the Monday night hangouts, which everybody should join sometime. It's awesome. With the crew. <laughs> and we were like getting our first glimpse of this. And then, then it, the different it levels of things it going on in this image. <laughs> just hit us we in like, phases oh, it was awesome looks really nice oh this looks really interesting oh it's really well done wait oh that's kind of weird that kind of looks like oh my god is that it's a, oh i'm gonna say it so you can be <laughs> lady like it's a giant synthetic <laughs> vagina you know it like made out of all this stuff going on there's like i have to say this might be the most crude and the most like tastefully nuanced done crude painting we've ever received <laughs> like Yes. It's, it's, it's um, rad. It's quite a feat. <laughs> but it's it's so well done that it like almost like supersedes how it's got the chords and the chords. Go. Let, let's blow it up so the rest of the class can see. Look at all the cool details. <laughs> we get, need to get all up in there. <laughs> oh, we're getting up in there. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Because like, right, you see like this stuff going on. Like they, they're... That was like one of our first observations. We're like, look at the size of these scissors. Like, we're opening the new town hall here. Let's get everybody on board. Like, there, there's, it's like, it's like part matrix, I, part like. It's so creepy, but it is so well executed. Like, I, I feel like you walked a really delicate line of painting something that is, in essence, fairly vulgar, but doing it's it in such vulgar, a way. It's beautiful. It, there is life happening. <laughs> it's what is well okay anyways <laughs> I, i've been there i've seen it this is clean <laughs> you've elevated it it's 
it's interesting. It's it's very well done. I'll just say yeah, I... I really like I like the way that you've added in the pregnant statues. Um, I think that that does a really good job tying in um, the idea and clarifying in a, a very clean, nuanced way what's happening here. Um, the way that the, the tubes and the pipes feel like, you know, they feel like pipes and tubes, but then they also feel like fallopian tubes and organic in a way. Like, it goes back and forth between the two. That's really well done. You can't say adult words like that. I get giggly at this hour. <laughs> the, whiskey, the whiskey makes everyone giggly. <laughs> this is great. I mean, not only is it technically one of the strongest pieces, but it kind of hits the theme and, you know, it... In very kind of outside the box like i would never be able to think of something like this wish i could but yeah this is great so one thing that does um feel like it needs more work to me is the figures they don't feel as finished they kind of feel like white sketches like the amount of thought you put into like the the tubes and the the particularly the guy down and like the different fabric textures but then when you get to like the the man curled up on the ground, like he's very simplistic. He's very like kind of just washed out. You kind of got some vague shapes and some blood spatters. Yep. But it, the level of thought that you put into other elements of the painting should be in the figures because they are a focal point. Yeah, I agree. I'd add like a bunch of highlights on little things to really express either, you know, like it's clearly kind of been raining. There's a lot of moisture in the air. Um or who knows where it came from, but you know, I I I put highlights on things to to yeah, kind of even the, push things a little bit further. Stuff. And if when you zoom back out, another thing that um, struck me about this painting is kind of the the foreground area. Like I get that it's all foggy and soft and going into mist, but something about that area starts to feel unfinished or too like monotone. Like everything kind of is the same there i want a little more contrast or a little more variety how, we have never brought this up further though but like how would you feel like if it was actually brought in just like you know just trimming a little bit of that fat with those big scissors along all the mm -hmm. sides because none of the side stuff really does add anything to yeah, it the, the, the sides yes and the bottom yes the top I don't know if I would cut it quite so low on the top. Yeah, There's something the about top, it. Yeah, I bring. I gotta bring the top up a little bit there. Sorry, guys. This is the point we realized in which the video on the the Photoshop before was messed up, so we had to change around the format a little bit. And you guys will see the we edited versions where I dropped it over the screens. We don't know why, but it was like blurring out all the Photoshop images on the screen. But... So I'll edit. I'll edit the JPEGs Person. back in. Always a technical situation over here we were at we artist or something <laughs> yeah we were at we were at asher's look at this this is a cool image very cool like the drawings all there too like you got the line art going for all of this and then it's kind of colored yeah you can see all the work you put into designing the space um that's what i'm the biggest it, fan it of it still looks it looks like um, you used a lot of 3D modeling and, um, you know, drew over it or, you know, turned it into a drawing of some kind, um, which is a really solid foundation. But I think it's kind of failing to, to, like, jump over into being a finished painting. It feels kind of like a colored in sketch of a 3D model. Like, it's, it's showing its steps a little too clearly. It's a good um, way of putting it. What do you think? I think too, like, f like let's say this, um, let's say Asher wants to remain like on this course. I think some of the artists that do this particular style really well are really good. Let's say it like something like this that separate out like the real big shape. So that means like because there's a lot going on and you got like all the textures everywhere. It's like, let's just use this little area for example, mm -hmm. right? That, that might mean just pushing the separation. See like on something like that's out there even and make I, it. And, and I don't just, know if I go lighter. Not lighter. I would, but I would like, soften it, but yeah, it has to be. Or like, and then you, you just color grade it quite differently than 
then uh, like the green so like green we could just keep pushing you know some like the purples and reds back there so it will you know using color temperature and harmonies will really separate really well and then it will it kind of bypass it because the lighting itself is gorgeous but like i totally agree with what you said it's like at this stage i'd probably just commit to being a painting Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it reads as if it wants to be a painting. Like that was the the goal was to turn it into a painting. Um, you get a lot of noise, um, just like a random texture. Like the texture the of the sky doesn't That's feel bad. like cloud texture. The texture of the glass, like the green glass that the creatures in, doesn't feel like glass. So there's a maybe a lot of this could be helped with just like material studies and being able to render the materials a little more accurately. Yeah, like having some of yeah the materials going on in there for sure yeah that the clouds look like gritty as opposed to that's like my least paper. favorite part of it is, is the sky mm -hmm. back there doesn't work at all and it's it's not so much the colors i think it's it's more of like just like a texture noisy texture that's really competing um and i will say all of the drawing feels really solid except yeah. for the creature inside of the tube feels very generic and way less developed or developed accurate. jessica's a wordsmith tonight well you are regularly but that's why i have you here because i give the whiskey all the credit <laughs> right yeah it, but like right if you trace the silhouette of the actual creature you're you're 100 percent right like it you could do more with this silhouette to evoke you know like a little bit more yeah it feels like the level of drawing is significantly lower on the creature than it is on the rest of the painting, which you could see like, which shows like what you parts you did more out of your head versus what parts you, you know, were able to use models and things like that to help you design the space accurately. So to find some sort of reference way that you can create a, a, a creature inside there that feels more realistic in perspective accurate anatomy like it's more noticeable because the other stuff is so accurate yeah like on so the statues for example discrepancy yeah so when something stands out like that it's kind of like oh there's a tool used for this that's helping you and then there's not for this which is being done out of your head and you don't want that it, it creates like the yeah. tension inside the piece but it's got a, it's a great <laughs> composition great drawing <laughs> Sorry, here we go. Hacking up. It's almost... <laughs> you got the first old man cop, not me. Oh, it's a, it's eleven. It's eleven a.m. <laughs> oh fuck it. Um, but yeah, it it's it's really good conceptually and in many areas technically. And now it's like taking that next leap and like doing the most ba painting you can of it. Yeah, and it's I think it's kind of you're you're hitting a wall of painting skills versus draftsmanship the draftsmanship is great and i would just take some time and do some studies like what does glass look like like what is how does light reflect off of you know the, the stone columns versus the stone on the ground you're also getting some value issues i'm seeing especially with the columns around the the main green tube where the, the yep. farther back columns would be darker than the columns in the front and they would have kind of the effect of that green on them which is not showing up very much. Um, so you would want to like push back some of the farther back columns, bring you can, forward. You can really see light. it when you desaturate it. Mm -hmm. Like you don't get those easy, right? Easy to read big shapes as, or like negative shapes as much, you know, as, as you potentially you probably want to. Well, and also you've done a really good job at defining space with line, but defining it with values so the light source is in the front the sky is dark behind so like the farther away the columns get the farther away anything gets the darker it's going to get so you need to unless you introduce another lighting source which i, I wouldn't recommend at this stage um but like the the columns that are farther back need to be darker than the columns that are in front of them um the the column that's you know above this art this doorway is lighter than the columns that are around this green glowing thing so there's just like some weird lighting issues like that that are flattening it out as well there's a really easy hack for this too because uh, i see a lot of work like this in my class and that's just since you have all the layers and they're going to be intangibly separate like they're going to be separate anyway shut the line art off and then make the that's image nice. really small and see how the shapes pop out 
It's it's the easiest yeah. way to do it, and then you could ta- you know toggle the line art back on, um, whenever you need it, or if you even want it to be part of the final. That that's actually what I was going to suggest too. Is like the the lines are really solid, but I think they're a bit of a crutch right now. I would suggest just turning them off and seeing if you can make it look like a painting without the lines, and then you can turn them back on whenever you want. But it'll push you to explore those shapes in more of a rendered, painted way. Thank you for the, the very good, very good advice. <laughs> Look at this name. I do what I can. Mad Meatball. <laughs> it's got to be a new, a new submit. I, I don't know if you came here before, but that's an awesome name. <laughs> Chuckles Muscle. <laughs> Does that work? It's like, <laughs> oh, God, you got this like a cop out of him. Good job. <laughs> I don't I don't have the I don't have the viruses. I just have seasonal BS. <laughs> I've just had a killer flu. <clears throat> yeah. I have okay, so I have two kids in daycare and a wife in public schools. They all <laughs> just bring mess loads of germs home home to me. And my, my husband and his whole family owns a restaurant and a pizza shop, so there's just, like, constant traffic. Whatever's in town, we all get it. It's a, <laughs> it flows through. There's no point in it. <coughs> Shit. All right. I have our sick complaints. <laughs> we don't, we're not looking for sympathy. We're just laying, laying it out for you guys so you understand where we're coming from here. This is good. I like this. <laughs> I, would, I would say right off the bat, See, it's contagious. I'm going to start hacking. You're going to start hacking. <laughs> Stop. Don't do it. It's like Yannin. <laughs> I don't think this needs this foreground element. Let's keep... No. I'll keep it simple. Just remove it. Because it just hogs and hugs this whole little edge. It's like... That's all it and is. And it feels very artificial. Yeah. Just it feel, doesn't feel like it belongs. Don't force it. Like We don't need something in every corner and every foreground. Only if it serves the better... You know, the greater picture. And honestly, it's better to have... I would say, like, you, yes. you want to have some corners that are different than other corners. Otherwise, it feels like, um, you mm -hmm. know, like one of those filters you put over a picture. On Instagram. <laughs> yep, yep. Yep. I think the other little thing, too, is, like, it doesn't need, for example, like, this mountain back here. It's just, like, one too many things in a really limited space. Yeah, I would design that shape going over his head a little, like, so it kind of, like, pushes the eye nicely. Like, I would just almost, like, just continue that forest. Like, you know, have it slightly open with, like, a lot of atmosphere. That's no easy. Yeah, just keep it simple. And so there's no tangents. It's like really simple like that. I think, mm -hmm. too, the other big thing... Um, rendering wise right there's a lot of there's a lot of warm on warm going on and i think like finding this point right like particularly i think about here and see what you could do to separate mm -hmm. maybe like that shape from this stuff that would be what my instincts would would guide me to do i think something like that i don't know what but i'd start Picking at that area. I'm also, I keep getting this feeling of like the robot is very like I love the way it's painted. You got some really nice transitions of like some cool teals and then some pops of highlights of yellows and bronzy colors. Um, and it is very beautifully painted. But then when we get to the the figure in the foreground, it feels much more drawn and like especially that arm coming down like more cell shaded, um, mm. where I almost want to see, like, when you hit that, especially because you've set the, the figure in the foreground as the focal point rather than the robot, you've you've reduced the robot in the hierarchy by making it blend in more, having less contrast around him. Um, but you've increased the contrast around the, the, the figure in the foreground, which says he's the main character with the glowing light and the dark silhouette. So with that being said, you've painted the robot much more intentionally than you've painted the figure in the foreground. Yeah. I agree. I would... I'd even, like, maybe take, like, these shapes. I'm still fixated on this. I 100% agree with <laughs> whatever what you're saying about got, the figure. I got you. You're doing something. I'm That's just, cool. like, looking at these little shapes here, and I'm like, this, this is a good one, like, to do the same effect where it 
I agree. Like and you could see part of the drawing what, is exposed where it like. Yeah. What you're doing is doing a really nice job of creating depth. It like feels like it's receding in space now, as opposed to kind of flattening out. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I like it. Like, I don't, I don't even know if it necessarily, eh, I like that light there, but then it's like, I'd, I'd warm up maybe that backside and then cool off right behind that figure a little. The animals are nice. I don't know if I'd have them doing exactly that. I like the birds. I love. The birds are great. The, the animals feel a little bit stuck in like a little. Yeah. Artificial. They're, they're kind of stuck in the stream a little bit. I, I almost feel like it might be better to put them like behind one of the feet, like one, like putting its head down drinking and the other looking at them. Something uh, yeah, that I have a family of them, like right there. It, if you if you put them together with the shape of the robot visually it'll become one shape even though they're they're different things but to group it in a way that they're not just like here's some deer in the middle of the water i'm back oh. this is good though i i mean the yeah, painting is overall is really good really overall like level of painting it's like nice we're just nitpicking you help help push you a little bit there but it's good this is gorgeous i love it I really do. And I would, I would find ways to bring that figure to life in the way that you painted that robot. Yeah, just like, a little bit, yeah. Figure. Put a little Norman Rock, Rockwell into it. Mm -hmm. All right. Oliver's. Okay, I'm not going to lie. This is one I fought for. <laughs> there was something about this piece I thought was so cute. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not usually a, a cute person, but these little blue Martian slugs. Shit. They were cute. <laughs> Stop. You're going to make me cough. <laughs> I'll try to mute it next time. I will. <laughs> I, I see but, you got it. <laughs> had to get it out. <laughs> How do you I, feel I know, with this one, right? Like, since, like, it's just, like, this shape is here. And yeah, this shape just kind of, like, crushes it. A really extreme composition. And it almost works, but it's it's the little detail like something isn't quite working and i almost think that it might be that the the creatures are pushed too far into the corner like if you extended that corner where they're at just like a little bit gave some breathing room to them and the tire the bottom tire i think that would make a huge difference in the like, composition like, like this yeah just down a little bit yeah and then you can kind of guide the eye up towards them and they don't feel like they're relegated because they're, they're they're the focal point of the piece. You don't want them shoved in the corner. You can have a very asymmetric composition. <laughs> or like but having like a couple of them like scrambling like underneath it. Like they yeah, just Yeah, like survived. a, a repeat of the blue somewhere um, could be really helpful. Because that's the other thing. The blue feels really out of place. So I almost want to see like a little bit of the blue in the sky. Or like he did like to put them into the, the picture somewhere. Um, like underneath the yeah, rover. Yeah, and you could just bring even like a little bit of this purple, this neutral purple blue into the sky to help tie that all together. Often is all it needs. And then if, where's the light source? I guess it's on this side, right? Yeah. Like you it's kind of all blown out. But yeah, yeah, you could you could you could bring a little. Yeah, bit. I would actually go into the blue and like push it off, like as it expands past the canvas. I thought that was you could pretty. Do a little bit more of that light. So let's let's talk about one of the bigger or more unique aspects of this image, right? Where you got like this really cool looking like watercolor like aesthetic. Yeah, the the, like the consistency everywhere. of the style is very nice. But then like you have something like right here, which is like it right just field. screams like photo or or three D, where it it doesn't necessarily yep. match the and rest it, it of it. It feels like you could very easily have kind of like gotten a, a drawing or a sketch from that and then made like painted it so it felt like a watercolor sketch in the way that the rest of it did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree completely. And I, I love the storytelling for this. I think that it's really a really cute story. You've got like these like little Martians or like some aliens on a planet with the humans exploring it and they don't know what it is. I think that that's just, I love that, that, that hit all the right yeah spot for me jessica wanted this one i could i think it's cool 
But I, I think that, you know, you could, you have a lot more room to play with the colors. Um, as he started showing, like putting in some of the purples or the blues into the sky, expanding the composition a little bit. And then even like when it comes to like that giant wheel that's in the foreground, like I know it's kind of a loose watercolory sketch, but maybe you could just add in a few highlights of the sky color, like a blue or purple or something kind of popping off of it that will help just bring a little more visual because mm. I think one of the things that suffered from was it became monotone in a lot of areas and you can use subtlety of color, just really pretty little passages, unexpected pops of color that can elevate a lot of that. Like, like under, underneath it, right. You'll see like lots more oranges and, and uh, like yellows from the sand color bouncing up, you know, and illuminating mm -hmm. some of that Yeah, in a really cool way. Really and then the the one the the areas that are facing up will get more of the blue, blue. light shining down, mm -hmm. yeah. and it'd be really pretty. I I love this piece, so I I think you should go to town on it. Mm -hmm. Let's look at poly cutters. But this was a really cool piece too. Yeah, I mean, let me let me blow this one back up here. Yeah, this is rad. Problematic. Okay, well, it's cool, right? We see the extra sketches and ideas here. So I think the first thing we were originally drawn with is like, besides like the theme being really cool, uh, the perspective is like, I think the big thing that we were kind of getting put off by, right? Like it. Yeah. The, the way that the figures are tilted versus the candles are tilted, like you you got this like really strong Dutch angle going on, which in some ways really works with the 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 ground and the robot and the thing that it's it's holding up, it looks really cool. But some of the smaller shapes inside of there don't. The candles go on like their own mm -hmm. axis, and it just feels weird. Maybe yeah. it's the can the candles ruin everything, because <laughs> even the <laughs> arm is kind of like in line with the figures. Yeah, like put the candles. Yeah, you got to pick one. So put the candles in the same plane as like the figures or the figures in the same so, axis. Let's look at, I think it's almost, I have weird, I have interesting thoughts on this. Sorry, because like technically then it means it's like that, right? So yeah, when you look at it this way, see the, the candles are all tilted. The candles yeah. got to be straight. <laughs> But this is this is really cool though overall. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's the... a little too extreme for its own good since you have so many angles right going on in it. Yeah, and in some ways the Dutch angle almost hides what the robot is actually doing. Yeah, I don't think it needs to. Looking at it to realize like, oh, he's he's holding this up. Like, Just do this. some Dutch angle could be really good here, but I think you kind of <coughs> want to feel that weight of whatever it is he's holding up with his mm -hmm. arms. Um, you can't feel that as much with the Dutch angle. So I agree. A middle ground. Somewhere. Not Don't straighten it out completely, but soften the Dutch angle a little. And then straighten the candles, and a lot of it will be, you know, really nicely there. I think the... the Another thing... You go, then I'll go. Another thing that's kind of throwing me off is kind of this, like, helter-skelter texture of the... There's, like, a, a kind of, like, quick brush of texture across whatever it is he's holding up and then this like scattering of flowers that feel really sharp but then there's other areas that just kind of like are very like soft brushy so i'm getting a weird consistency with some of the the really sharp crunchy textures with the soft brushy areas that i don't know i'm, I'm not quite yeah. sure what the answer is there but it needs to be refined a little bit yeah the texture is a little all over the place it, i think it's just a little restraint a little control you know, deliberateness with some of that will go a long way. I think the... yeah, it, feels, it feels like a brush and it feels like, like you've kind of just relied very heavily on the randomness of the textures of the brush rather than designing the textures intentionally. Uh, for me, the, the, the machine is like a little too monochromatic and there's very little shifts in temperature and value in it. Mm -hmm. And I, I would try to bring more out of that. Yeah. Yeah, I'd give it a little bit more, like, uh, of the light kind of coming through between the arms. Yeah. For me, even more so, I think, is the figures. I feel like the figures feel very 
like you've got a lot of really cool transitions of colors in the robot and the landscape around the, the robot. When you get to the figures, though, they are red with like red highlights and darker red shadows and then like some green highlights on the back of them, which don't quite make sense. So there's no there's not a lot of temperature shifting in there as far as, you know, with the this red object, you've got a yellow light coming through. So it's going to get more red and saturated in the highlights, which you kind of have. But then like, as it goes into shadow, it's going to lose the redness. It's going to shift into a cooler color. And so you want to, you know, like all those darker areas wouldn't be, you know, just darker red than the, the light areas. You're on fire tonight. What a well said. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, good job. Good. No, that's awesome. I blame the whiskey. It makes me talkative. So I'll try to keep it's the secret to, to having a really good. That's a the secret to having a really good convention. You know, it is. I don't. I don't do a convention without a bottle of whiskey. It's, I can't do it. Can't. I'll try, I'll try and control myself. So this is um, yeah, yeah, purse. This is cool. I'll blow it up full screen mm -hmm. here. Really, really good. Really nice category. attention to details and materials. It's well organized. They got the uh, depth, the depth blur going on. It's almost like a little too soft in in some places, but I mean, it works. It, it works. It really does. Got the C three PO vibe going. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit of like the too much of the a white highlight and a black shadow in this um it, I guess it has a retro like, feeling because of that which i kind of like <laughs> yeah that's true that's true um i see there's like kind of like some attempt to model the, the highlights into like warm on her and then cool on him but that doesn't work just because like they would be in the same light environment so you kind of have it looks like the lighting is very cool so you'd almost want to lose some of the saturation as she goes into highlights and gain saturation as she goes into shadow because you got to think that the color of the atmosphere the color of the light around her there, there's a there's a whole like you know depth of air between us and them and so that whatever color that the light and the air is is going to affect the colors of her and so if she is a similar color to the light and the air around her it's going to make her those colors pop even more but if it's the opposite, it's going to neutralize a lot of those colors. Teacher, I got a question. I got a question. I'm, so, I'm talking. I'm sorry. No, this is good. I got, I got one. I got How do you feel? How do you feel about the, I mean, the very obvious and maybe appropriately so, aura around the head, right? Like this is the holy figure. But do you think it, because it's kind of already kind of obvious, does it need that extra, extra to, to still kind of pull I, that I off. actually find it distracting and in a way I did too okay I, I almost would rather see something more literal like he's carrying the scythe I'd rather see a halo or something like that like a, a literal metal halo all right we're gonna get the we're gonna get the halo going <laughs> the the quick version oh god I can't yeah something like that let's get some oh well there's color dodge for you folks Go get some some yellow going. Yeah. Because the other thing too is like if you think about it, if you put this glowing light behind her, you didn't actually show any of the effects of that light. You didn't show the the warm yeah. light reflecting off his scythe or on the back of his hood or on the back of her mm -hmm. her hood. Um, so it introduces a lot more problems that you're going to have to solve when you put a light source directly behind her. Yeah, you can like just make that look a little. A little brighter there, something like that. But yeah, I agree. I think that's a great suggestion. But yeah, it was it was distracting me too. And then you could bring in some of the light from that, right? That that's going to become its yes. own highlight. Yeah, so like you could like you could add it into the scythe like, and stuff. Yeah, tie, tie them. It's going to affect everything around her. That's and that's the complicated nature of an image like this. With when you start adding light sources and, and aesthetics into it, you have to figure out how it's going to affect every little thing, you know, in in the picture. Right. And one of the things I would say that this piece actually, um, 
I think that it, it needs a little more work on the composition. It's very like, here's two figures in the center, cropped yeah. in perfectly. There's very little thought to directional lines, leading lines, how the environment kind of pushes the eye through the painting. Um, I, I would say the composition is probably the weakest element of this Would painting. you say it lacks a little Dan Dos Santos? He, he does a lot of these cover-based images, right? And he's, right, really, he's really good, good at, at painting the eye through the central figure. said he lacks it. Yeah, yeah. The art of the cover artist, like, is bringing that in yeah, and it, then, like, drawing, using have, cloud shapes, foreground shapes, tying it all together, shadow like shapes. Like, maybe you have the clouds breaking behind her and behind him they get darker, so you create almost, like, this narrative of the clouds that mirrors them. But it also like creates more leading lines where it kind of like creates like an arrow of light towards her, which leads your eye up and towards him. Right. It's a meta. And honestly, like I would I would even differ their heights a little more. Definitely. Um, like I would I wouldn't put them so close together on the same height. You'd make one of them taller. He seems like the obvious choice to make taller. But so then there's more, again, there's more variety, like more interest for the eye. Mm -hmm. um, and then like the, the shapes in the bottom, like you kind of have it the same like hump of grass in front of both of them. I would have it like clouds of light in front of her and then the dark shape kind of like creating an S curve up towards him that connects with her. So you can you can create a lot more interesting shapes that lead the eye through the painting rather than just mirroring everything on either side. Yeah, you're absolutely loaded. Look at you on fire tonight. I love it. This <laughs> it's the first stuff. time I drank in, in weeks. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, I, I got the fuel in front of you, and I, I, I put it. the inspiration there, and you're just soaring. There we go. <laughs> I'm trying not to talk over you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're doing great. I, I'm, I'm just heaving and... On on autopilot at this stage. You're you're on empty over there. I see your glass is empty. Yeah, I'm guilty, but I started before. I started before Jess. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> and I still have a monster. All right. Because my little monsters will be up in six hours from now. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. We all sleep until nine o'clock here. I did that once in 2016. It was great oh my God. when I was on a <laughs> catching up. I was uh, what's it called when you, when you mess up sleeps from the uh, uh, fl flights. And then I can't. Oh, I can't, my, jet lag. Jet, I was jet lag. I can't even think of basic shit like that right now. I was jet lagged from being in Hawaii. And yeah, I slept till like nine. It was great. <sighs> I haven't done it since. You poor poor soul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is cool. I like this. By the way. Uh, pixel man pixel moon this is cool i like the textures are really cool the light is is active i can feel it mm -hmm. um everything's really well e evenly presented and rendered um i like it i don't know how it holds up like like if we like really peel away you know and dive into it but i get good vibes from it i think organizing the values as you can see from this first sort of like DSAT uh, assessment of it. Like, I think we could definitely curate some of that somehow to like, yeah, you, it's noisy. You really need some it's of noisy. that like light pushing the farther things back. Um, you've got that, you know, the skylight behind it. So as opposed to the one with the green tube thing where it should get darker as it gets farther back, this should get lighter as it gets farther back. And that'll help kind of separate like, the, the different columns and stuff and help them not compete as much. Definitely. Yeah, like, I think it'd be taking something like that even. Like, there there's already atmospheric perspective in this piece, but it's kind of like it's not enough. artistically yeah. value grouping things. No, I'm not doing a good job. Oh, no, I wouldn't get darker. I'd get lighter. No, I'm trying to get lighter. I'm trying to, I'm trying to fight it. Get the blue... Yeah, but like really separating that out and then even maybe like on like the shadow, like really get contrast. -y. Yeah, that that structure in the middle it is the focal point and it, it's really low contrast and it's kind of lighter than the columns around it, which I get that it's a glowing blue thing, but it, you can't it feels feel the glow. Like 
it feels like it's farther away than the columns because of the lack of contrast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could work that. And then and I would actually, I feel like almost like it's a missed opportunity to very subtly bring some of those blues of the orb and the guy's cloak into the sky back there. I know it's all foggy, but I feel like just some breakthrough of that blue could help unify the picture. Coming over to the dark side, embracing the blue. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I like blue. It's a good color. It's, oh. it's almost as good as gray. I, on, on, fa no, on Instagram and Twitter this week, I posted my favorite personal images from last year, 2021, and they, I, I realized, like, God, all I do is paint blue and green. And then occasionally tickle yellow. <laughs> That's all I do. No, no. I gotta, I gotta branch I, out. I was looking at my twenty twenty one paintings, and oh my god, they are so bright and so colorful. For someone who loves gray as much as I do, I don't paint it a lot. It's, I'm really it's proud. Kind of <laughs> this must be your fault. <laughs> I am, con I am contagious. Gray painted this year. <laughs> I'm what you see what I'm. I'm, I'm like trying to cut that. <laughs> Don't encourage me at this hour. I'm trying to cut back on some of the noise with this. You know, it's yeah. it's like yeah, I, it's one of those things like throwing, tossing highlights into corners gets unwanted, you know, unwanted attention. Yeah, they, this here works better because it leads us to the figure. And I would actually possibly even have it break over the tree just a little bit more to push the eye towards him. Damn right. Um also like knocking like everything behind like like see like this cloud's getting highlights i would just put that in a shadow which i don't i don't know if there's a easy hack for that right there's probably not let me blow it up just better suck it in um no yeah, it's I, not working <laughs> come on i'm really feeling like if just like from the top like above that oh, like shit floating orb in between the columns like just like a haze of that bluish color kind of like yes. in the sky cool. could do a lot to unify this piece because i get that it's like this glowing blue thing but you want it to not feel alien to the rest of the painting you want it to feel like it's part of the design of the color scape and just having and it, you've actually done a nice job i like the little subtlety of the blue in the columns even though they're red um i think that that's a really nice touch but i think a really nice quiet way to bring that into the painting will also be in the sky. So, oh, okay. So you're saying bring like a little, just like a soft of... airbrush of blue, like just from the top between those columns. Did you say soft. It. I heard square brush. Oh God. Don't do <laughs> soft, soft, calm yourself. <laughs> or, I mean, that doesn't look half bad either. I, I can do a, I can BS the and sky. It, there's, there's always, with art, there's so many different solutions, but it's kind of like addressing the same problem. It is. Like, see, like, this sucker here, like, maybe just, like, having 10% of the highlights that are on it compared to, like, what is there, right? So it's picking this green, and then, like, see, it's, like, a, it's a very loud mm -hmm. area, and all all I'm doing, I'm going to tell you to calm down just a little bit. It's all <laughs> I do all day is telling, telling little little humans to calm down and same thing i come back at work and do it let's calm down those colors and the values let's follow the highlights let it speak mm -hmm. you know it'll be good and that also brings me to another another thought that i had about this piece is you're kind of running into the local color problem where the red columns the highlights are more red the green leaves the highlights are, are lighter green and you kind of want to pick a unifying color for the light temperature. Um, it could be yellow, but that's not showing like on the orb or on the figure with the blue. Um, you're getting some pretty blues in the shadows. So maybe bring some of that into the trees where right now the green is just, it's green. Whether it's light or it's dark, it's just green. Um, so playing with that color temperature again and unifying it throughout the rest of the painting will help it feel more yeah. like it's it's a real light environment some areas do it better than others for sure mm -hmm. like see like having yeah. that all be green green and then like even in the background like see like that really gets hit bad but uh having that kind of be like see instead of white just being 
and maybe I did that. You know, maybe somewhere along the line, my wider, uh, but yeah, have it <coughs> be readable. This is gorgeous, though. It's so cool. Yeah, it's a cool piece. I I think it just it just needs more love and time, and just pushing those colors so and just it's it's it, it. right. It's very complicated, and it's well and done. It, so it the only way up is through the hardest hardest parts. Yeah, like I I would say that this tree that the guy is standing on as it goes off the canvas, that tree is probably one of the best. The the wood, not the leaves, is one of the best parts of the painting. One of the best painted areas of the painting. So then it becomes a matter of making the rest of the painting feel as well painted as that area. Mm, this is good. Is that it? I do we? I think that's uh, it. We'll be right back. We're gonna. We all? We're gonna. Are we done? Yeah, we're gonna fight over our favorites. <laughs> favorites. The shit. This. One? Oh. I don't know. We're don't back. Know we, we 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 agreed on everything pretty much. We picked a winner. and We each picked a runner up. So, right, we both agreed Vasco's was awesome. As, as shocking as it is, it's so well done. It's so well realized. Um, bah, 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 bah. Yeah. It's so good. Very cool. Let's appreciate it. Yeah. And then. And it, it's everything I love about sci-fi. Yes. It's really well done. I love the. Sci-fi gets weirder than fantasy in most cases, which is why I really do like it. Oh, yeah. Witcher, Witcher <laughs> kind of scratches that itch a bit with how crazy shit gets in that. But sci-fi always does it a little bit further. And your yeah. choice for run-up was Albino Crocs. And this one, again, it was for the composition and the shape language and stuff. Like, it's just, there's so many cool, like, this piece is so sophisticated and so interesting. I just, I want to see it push, like, 20% more and to actually feel finished. And I <clears> was <throat> a, sucker for, a sucker for Pixel Man's picture. I just love pillars and red and green. <laughs> and, yeah, this is and just blue. cool. And I like waterfalls, so you had me there had me there great job Although, guys i'm gonna figure out i will say i will say oliver's still i love oliver's i love the little blue martian slugs there could be blue martian slugs in anything and it would be better for it it's true thank you Absolutely. folks for those who hung around for this you know hour and 70 minutes or whatever it was and uh yeah we'll announce the next challenge uh right in a second here so thank you for coming on uh jess again and of being course. alive and helping me record these <laughs> at midnight um now at at 70 percent capacity 70 <laughs> percent, yeah thank you so guys the next challenge is going to be to design some type of wall themed town or village uh, just like you can see here in gavin manor's piece so some kind of long vertical slope it it could be like in a canyon you know it could be going up a spire but it, you know featuring a prominent wall with a settlement designed along going up it. It could be any architectural style, any kind of period, sci-fi or fantasy, uh, but that's the primary theme and should be the focus of the design. All right, so uh, let's make that due February 10th, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.